Um, welcome uh, to our Power Breakfast interview today. Monday being a very special day. We start the week. Uh, and the weekend was replete with stories about our new, uh, uh, the entry of China as a major partner uh, in Kenya, uh, Kenya's investment and foreign policy. And this morning we want to just focus on exactly what the implications are for the many bilateral agreements we've signed with China, as well as Kenya's foreign policy, which appears to be shifting from west to east. And to join us to discuss this are people who we regard as experts, uh, first uh, Professor uh, Gerishan Ikiara, who was the, who, until he left government in the Kibaki administration, uh, the permanent secretary in charge of transport, uh, when the big grant projects, infrastructure projects started. And also in the studio is uh, former ambassador uh, Boas Mbae, who served in many missions uh, representing Kenya from Rwanda to The Hague to Germany, uh, France, and former PS also foreign affairs before he became uh, final posting was as high commissioner to Tanzania. Uh, Kenya's High Commission Tanzania. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no ladies at all, gentlemen. <laughs> 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 I might have uh, uh, misreferenced the Mutegi. No, 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 <laughs> my my co-anchor. Co uh, okay, uh, let's start um, with you, Ambassador um, Ambaya. Is everything all happy with our new engagement and drift in foreign policy? Uh, people are raising questions. Are we abandoning our traditional allies? Are we embracing new allies? Are we safe uh, with our new foreign uh, inclinations? Well, I don't know what you mean by that, but uh, any time a nation is born, it becomes an act of international law. And that gives it the right and the authority to conduct relations with whoever <coughs> comes along the way. We have had a very good uh, stint with the West, I think. Uh, largely because of the Cold War. But since the end of the Cold War, those who have watched the situation will see that the West became one group. It became harder to deal with. They introduced a lot of new emerging issues into international relations. And this was not necessarily uh, welcomed by developing countries. Uh, I think our own country resisted change for quite a long time. Uh, and that therefore raised question marks as to how much we were going to continue benefiting from the West. The look East policy, to me, I think, is timely. Uh, it's good for Kenya, and it diversifies our foreign policy uh, objectives. In other words, what we are not able to get from the West, right. we should be able to get from the East. It's very much akin to the non-aligned movement, uh, the, the policy of non-alignment, where we could to toss the, the West and the East and right. hope to benefit from yeah. Somebody would argue that uh, we are unable, we are looking east because the conditions that the West have put on us are too hard, and those conditions are necessary for us as a country uh, to comply. So we are escaping the harder questions to go for easier options. It is not necessarily easier options. Nobody Especially those questions around <laughs> corruption, accountability, governance, which traditionally people believe the West have put on us. So we are dodging those to avoid the sanctions that come with uh, uh, our, our relationship with the West in preference for unconditional support or partnership from China or the East generally. There, there are no easier options in diplomacy. You take your pick when it comes. And I think any realizes it can benefit more from the East. It is true, the conditionalities that have been placed on, uh, on developing countries generally uh, by the West uh, as a result of the collapse of Cold, uh, the, the Soviet Union, are quite difficult. And I think we probably were not prepared for them uh, right. at, at the time they came. Uh, it, is, it is also true that those conditionalities has, have helped us uh, create uh, a more level playing field in the country politically, a new constitution, uh, and I think the benefits from the new constitution are quite immense. So here is a situation where the West is also drying up of resources. They are trying to help their brothers and sisters in, near home. In Europe, for instance, the former Soviet bloc countries yes. uh, are receiving a lot of money. I mean, just this week, what was played for you, Ukraine is, is, is a lot of money. Yes, it yes. has never happened in the history of the West in terms of African yes. uh, countries' development. Yes. So I think uh, we, are, we are finding uh, an alternative, and I don't have a problem if Kenya gets that alternative and benefits from it right. as much as we can. Okay. Dr. Kiara, yeah. you know, this is about money, and you are the economist here. People are worried. Uh, are we safe with this huge bag of money that we're getting? 
and what is the impact of these uh, uh, new engagements or agreements we've signed on Kenya's overall economic health, uh, foreign debt, which people are saying has tripled, uh, tripled over the last 10 years. Are we making rational decisions in the bilateral arrangements we are getting into? Well, thank you. I think I was starting by I think supporting the ambassador here that um, Kenya is not really moving east as such, but uh, diversifying its uh, international Sources. relations. Mm -hmm. And it's always good for a country to, to be able to have a uh, diversified clientele, friends, and so forth. And they, I think this is what we are doing. Also, you need to note that uh, China, for instance, was one of the first two or three countries to actually uh, establish an embassy here, right at the time of independence. Right. So our relationship with uh, China is not new, I think, as some people seem to imply. Mm. It's a wrong, wrong relationship with a lot of respect actually and because it was the number if you look at it you find that it's among the top five uh, embassies to be established here and um, and if, culturally also you know the the, the, the the some of the kenyans with the chinese origin uh, at the coast which mm. actually binds bind the country quite a lot mm. um they finance our kasaran uh, um, stadium uh, quite some time back, which has been actually has been able to attract a lot of uh, economic activities. So that actually, if you were to consider that the money which was spent on uh, construction of the stadium and what we have earned over right. the time, mm -hmm. you can't compare it. Right. So the, the amount of money we are getting is not uh, is not a lot, because first of all, the, um, if you get like three to seven billion uh, uh, Kenya shillings for the standard gauge uh, railway line. Within actually, by the time it is completed, there are kind of economic activities generated. Right. It's way, way ahead. Right. For instance, if you look at the Lake Highway, mm. which is spent about that a billion uh, shillings, yes. it has now attracted investment in excess of uh, maybe 500 yes. billion, billion yes. in terms of private sector, uh, creating mm. jobs. So, such a own uh, helps to expand the economy. Right. And even the, the servicing of that loan yes. wouldn't be much easier because you are not talking about uh, a GDP with a much bigger base. Yes. So I myself, as an economist, don't think that uh, you, we are, you are happy with the run. But very the question, very uh, uh, before Mutegi chips in, just uh, uh, the the worry is that our foreign debt has really gone up. It's now estimated that having cross the 50 percent of our GDP mm. uh, which some economists think is risky for the country we need to manage that uh, estimated at two point something trillion is that uh, healthy still for a country I think it's fairly fair well managed I think I would say our monetary authorities have managed the economy fairly well over the years you remember mm. even now recently we we under scare or people are worried about the interest uh, the, the inflation rate and it's now been controlled to less than 10 percent. Mm. Uh, so we have actually had a fairly competent uh, monetary authority right. over the years, uh, and they know what they are doing. And Parliament is also one of the authorities that uh, has an oversight mm. over the borrowing and so forth. Okay. So I think there are a lot of uh, safeguards with regard to the size of the foreign debt, and I don't think we have reached there. And as I said, within a very short time, as the economy is expanding, um, you know, like in the last 10 years, it has almost doubled from 15 billion U.S. dollars, the GDP, right. to that the 7.5 billion U.S. dollars. So that now gives you capacity to borrow more and uh, you see even more resources from uh, external resources. What about standards? The people who are concerned about uh, the standards of um, work that they do, the Chinese do, in fact, I remember at one time I talked to the German uh, ambassador mm -hmm. about the car route. Mm -hmm. And they, they were expressing, they were kind of thinking it's not, it's not standard. Uh, if you compare yeah. that road and the road roads in, uh, in, in Europe, all the roads uh, Chinese have been building in Ethiopia and uh, all of Africa, that the standards of the Chinese work is not. Uh, as, 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 uh, I, I think this, this has been a mystical or a politicized uh, view because, you know, like... Um, as a PS in the Ministry of Transport, mm -hmm. we were buying uh, quite a lot of equipment from uh, China and other countries. And we sent technical teams of right. engineers to load and bid us from the West, from wherever, from America, from China. 
And uh, it's the Chinese uh, uh, quality was much, much higher for many of the things that we actually got. It, it was out of merit. Right. It's not the... So, the, um, the so there's nothing wrong with the Chinese standard. So nothing which wrong. is which is what Kenyans have come some to of the loans <laughs> which uh, <laughs> some of the loans which they did here even uh, if you were to compare the Mombasa road yes there are sections done by the European, German, German yeah, European, European Union, 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 Union Chinese yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and for a long time the Chinese was the reference from uh, the motorists right in, in, in Kenya okay so and I think they have come with a very very different new ways of doing you know the kind of materials they use yeah. Uh, soil especially and whatever the materials rendered available. Yes. Yeah, I think it's it's technology that is worth the borrowing. Yeah. And today a lot of uh, European companies actually we found for instance the cranes for the port. Mm. Uh, some of the European countries were actually buying yes. this crane from China. From China. Yeah. The, there is the argument uh, in uh, in terms of the for example the big project is the SGR mm. uh, that these projects are uh, especially the SGR is uh, more geared towards opening up the region uh, uh, an export oriented investment rather than a local a promotion of local interest in the balance of the two that we are trying to create a, a corridor uh, to open up the countries which depend on us and our benefit on this line is really in terms of the revenue we raise from charging the importation and transport of goods to the region. No, is that argument valid? No, no, no. You cannot separate the two, the national and the, the regional. Yeah. We actually, the earnings on the Northern Corridor is one of the major uh, sources of uh, our export of services, right. the transport services. And this is going to enhance it much, much more. But remember that um, close to 60% of the cargo carrying through the, the Northern Corridor yes. is actually Kenyan bound. Yes. And we have been affected like any other country by poor transport, uh, inefficient transport system, mm. which earns about that percent to our cost of production. Yes. Making our exports very, very uncompetitive. Yeah. Same thing for Uganda, Rwanda, and what have you. So Kenya is a major beneficiary of that, of that, of that both uh, even in improving the, the efficiency of the local producers. Yeah. But also, we are also the biggest exporter in the region. Of, of the, so user of the same infrastructure. So yeah. we, we, it is a really a double win mm. for Kenya and also for the region. Let me go back to the issue raised by David about the governance, mm. the corruption. Mm. The Western countries, when they give us money. They ensure that it's properly utilized and that there's not much corruption. China, uh, there's a lot of uh, thinking that there's a lot of uh, so it's changing. How are you sure that the money we are getting will go to those projects and not uh, another scam? Maybe you, you can Yeah, th that's a very that. interesting point you're raising. The, 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 I think the problem with it is that it is not completely true. Uh, if we can't ourselves as a country ensure that the money we get from outside because eventually our taxpayers are going to repay this money if we can't make sure that money is used properly don't blame the chinese and i think we should blame ourselves uh, i want the chinese the chinese companies can collude and like western countries where there is governance in western countries western countries cannot come and corrupt people here they will be that they are restricted by their government but not that not the case in china it takes two to tango and if Western uh, managed projects are not as good as Chinese. There is a reason. Why uh, we've tried to find out what that reason is. I think primarily, in my opinion, it is ourselves. We need to be uh, aware that the money we are getting from whether China, whether from World Bank, whatever, will be repaid by Kenyans. We we need to make sure that they get a good product out of that. I want to give you an example, a story of, of what came to me when I was permanent secretary for affairs. That was when uh, President Kibaki made the first uh, state visit to China. I think it was in October 2005. And we, we stayed in China for 10 days or so. When we came back, the following day, two ambassadors came to see me as, as permanent secretary. Ambassador of the United States, Ambassador of, uh, and the High Commissioner of Britain. And they asked me point blank, what is it that made the president go to China? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> I, found that, I found that very, very strange and interesting at the same time. Yeah. One, you have the United States Ambassador, UK High Commissioner, coming to call on a permanent secretary for foreign affairs in Kenya. It must have 
uh, hit them very hard. Mm. Why was President Kibaki going to China? Mm. Now, we discussed and uh, we gave the example of infrastructure, what we need and so forth. They talked about the same things you're talking about, uh, mm. that uh, chi Chinese uh, companies don't produce good, uh, good roads and so forth. But the fact is, we need the roads in the first place. The West has not given us those roads. If you go uh, for Western contractors, it will take you 10 years for feasibility studies, even just to uh, begin to recommend that a road needs to be done. Uh, you don't need to wait for 10 years to get a road. Now, interestingly, from that conversation, two weeks later, uh, Tony Blair, then Prime Minister of Britain, went to China. So I called the High Commissioner and said, look, do you remember our conversation? <laughs> 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 remember our conversation? Yeah. He said, yes. Why did Tony Blair go to, to, China. to China. China? And he said, you know, China is a very important country. We need to trade with it. So they want to trade with China, but, but not China. Yeah. So I, I think the premise on which your question is best uh, needs to be reviewed. Yeah. I think, uh, Mutegi, the, that <laughs> issue of uh, governance, <laughs> you, you know, um, there are a lot of scandals involving uh, American companies, European companies. I think uh, we we have taken a very queer stand on corruption in Kenya because, in my view, I've probably only in more than uh, possibly 50 countries uh, in the last 20 years or so, and I've done also studies in many of them. My view is that um, Kenya is an average country in the world in terms of corruption. Other countries are e excel. <laughs> some of <laughs> excel. <laughs> <laughs> some yeah. Excel. Yeah. But um, we, we, I think we have built a, a psychological issue about corruption in Kenya, which is not very good, especially to the, I see the, the youth mm. who are very demoralized because they think the country is so corrupt and they are not able to have a comparative approach or a look at the corruption. Is Kenya unlike France, in Germany, uh, US? Eh? Mm. You remember in the U.S. Uh, there was a prominent politician who was a pro politician who was trying to sell the the post of Obama when he became the president. Yes. Now somebody who will dare do that kind of uh, <laughs> has got how many uh, small uh, corruption. But but <laughs> there is also a general <laughs> perception. I care. Somebody would not try, would not believe you if you say that uh, uh, the notion held by people that. Chinese companies are easy on the tech. They give commissions quickly to get the business regardless. Yeah. They have no business morality. The, no, no, that, it's, that is a, it's not a stereotype or yeah. the, it exists. Indeed, it's, it's and they that they are easier takers than European or American companies. It is their view that uh, the leaders of a country should be mature enough. They have been elected by the people. Yes. Eh? We cannot want to supervise them like, like, like uh, small kings. Mm. So they feel that they don't have a uh, um, mandate to interfere with the internal affairs. But obviously, they actually, cons uh, I was in uh, uh, that delegation that went with the President Kibaki to China. Yes. And at that time, we sort of signed about seven mm -hmm. agreements. Yeah. And those agreements have had a um, huge impact on, uh, on uh, IT, IT sector in this country, on road construction, on many other areas. They have had a big, a big change. Yeah. Uh, the seven agreements which were signed then. Um, uh, China, I think, respects the sovereignty of other countries. And I, I think we feel that while there is, uh, in, it is important for international communities to be able to check one another, yes. I think overdoing it, uh, and uh, it's often uh, ranges to the uh, loss of respect yes. for, the, for the leadership of the, of the country. Yeah. And China respects that. Yeah. Actually, uh, most of the land world countries, yeah. They feel that uh, what we call interference of uh, whatever maybe an agency goes too far, like in our southern Sudan. Yes. The, the fighting and what have you. Yeah. So I think that we should draw some lines on the moderation. Okay. Yeah. Ambassador, let's look at the geopolitics of this uh, new push. I mean, Kenya seems to be taking a lead in this region completely uh, in spearheading uh, economic uh, initiatives. Uh, and, and this, you know, the attendance of the heads of state at this signing, what, what significance do you read into that and what is the future looking like? I think we need to take into account two things. The first, Kenya is uh, the largest economy in this region. And therefore, the foundation that we have ra uh, laid down through manufacturing, uh, we produce most of the goods that, uh, and services actually, that are enjoyed in the East African community and also in the larger Eastern African region, uh, it, we are bound to take a lead. 
And mm. I think it is just proper that Kenya takes that lead. Yeah. The second point we need to take into account is uh, we are also the gateway to international, for international trade for most of these countries. Uh, what uh, Pierre said about uh, uh, communication and how much Kenya will benefit from, say, the standard gauge railway uh, holds water. The thing is that even Kenya itself, being the largest economy in the, in the, in the, in the region, we need that r railway to export our goods to the region right. also. So it is not a one-way traffic. Mm. But I think even if it, is, it were to be a one-way traffic, we then play a very important role in terms of international trade for opening up African markets to, 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 the, to the rest of the world. Yeah, but, but these uh, sort of agreements really are premised on a, a peaceful future, on political stability in some of these countries. And as we can see, there are real serious political questions, say, for example, in South Sudan. Uh, trying, we're trying to pull South Sudan into the East African community while they have the other, even some threats to go to the Islamic uh, Organization of States. Uh, we have uh, real serious political issues in Uganda. You know, we have serious pro political issues even in Rwanda, although, you know, relatively stable, but there are issues. Uh, don't this have an impact on really, you know, the potential for realizing some of these grand projects? I believe uh, if we uh, make our regional organizations work well, will probably be solving some of those political problems. Because a country like Rwanda, the conflict in that country is basically between two ethnic groups. But when they see that in Kenya you have five major ethnic groups and are able to do business, they're able to develop their country, they begin to understand it is not necessarily fighting for supremacy that is uh, the, the priority in, in any local situation. Now, uh, Kenya used a very small organization called IGAD, Intergovernmental Development Authority, yeah, yes. IGAD, to midwife peace in, in, in Sudan, the larger Sudan, which resulted in the Comprehensive Peace Agreement where South Sudan was born. Now, we were hoping that they will build on that to try and uh, create stability within the country so that the region ceases to be looked at in terms of political instability alone. Uh, and, and I hope even the, the signing uh, two days ago will help achieve that objective because you have to romp in uh, rogue elements so that they begin to see uh, how Kenya has been able to, to manage it, uh, affairs and how Kenya has been able to help the countries in the region even with a lot of instability. So I think it is not necessarily that uh, instability per se will cause this problem, but I think it's how we deal with it. Yes. And what the is the future of the East Africa community in that th this grouping? It looks like Tanzania is in missing jitters, in and it, uh, the, 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 the cooperation of the whaling, which leaves them out. Uh, and the, the other day, President Kikwete was a little bit about this. What do you use the way to take the community? The East you community. see, the, the, the community, the treaty for the East African community itself provides for the uh, the possibility of the willing to move on. So it is not something that is being created against the treaty. And uh, I suspect Tanzania is beginning to see uh, with these particular infrastructural projects coming up uh, that Tanzania will be left behind because we are dealing with the same hinterland, uh, DRC, Eastern DRC, uh, Sudan, South Sudan and so forth, Uganda and so forth, which hinterland Tanzania would be very happy to use. I remember when we had chaos in 2008, I was, uh, I was high commission in Tanzania, and all the countries, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, flocked into uh, DRC, flocked into Dar es Salaam, <coughs> to sign, conclude treaties, which would enable them to continue with the trade through the port of Dar es Salaam. So I think there is that competition between Mombasa mm -hmm. and, and Dar es Salaam. That is a major problem. And I, I remember you were there in government as well. We, we had to send a team, a RECA team, to try and find out exactly how we can uh, try and improve efficiency at the port of Mombasa mm -hmm. to address those problems. So this is going to be a major problem, uh, you know, economically between us and Tanzania. <laughs> we are setting up the Lamu port, we have Mombasa, Absolutely. we are setting up SGR to open up all the way to Uganda and Rwanda. Where is that? Isn't that making uh, Tanzania jealous? No, clearly. They are also opening up Bagamoyo, yeah. uh, a very <laughs> big port, <laughs> and yeah. they also be developing a standard engine railway line. Also, from uh, Bagamoyo to... Yeah, and the, the five presidents, I was involved in a project which was prioritizing uh, infrastructure projects for the five countries for the 2012 uh, summit yes. of the hands of state. And they are giving infrastructure very, very high... Priority. Uh, priority. Mm. And they, they see the whole region as one. Yeah. 
and the the issue of uh, uh, the the wearing uh, patinas and so mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. Actually, European Union has provided the best example. They have a very soft policy so that if you are not ready to join uh, the euro currency, yes. they can give you time. Yes. Up to now, Norway has never been able to, to, to pass a, a, a referendum yes. to join the EU. EU yes. But they, they are still uh, given time. So it, it's good to adopt that kind of uh, soft attitude to so allow countries yeah. to process. So Tanzania has a reluctance or sort of uh, lukewarm you know, behavior towards the East African cooperation is essentially economic or political because they are finding more value to be in the southern african yes, region mm -hmm. mozambique serving malawi to the south or is it because kenya's political dominance is you know dominance uh, part of it is historical you know the the way the first uh, community disintegrated left a bit of bitter taste mm. in the mouths of uh, uh, tanzania mainly and also to some extent uganda yeah so they, they have never fully forgotten it and they, they, they see whenever they look at you know, integ discuss integration I think that aspect comes up yeah and also obviously Kenyans uh, dominance in the economy not so much in politics in the economy mm -hmm. uh, is, is a major concern for Tanzania but I think they are also now major beneficiaries of the community with the uh, uh, Arusha being the headquarters yes. it's actually becoming a major major source of uh, resources for Tanzania yeah and um, so I, I think uh, they are still warming up that issue where they were saying that they they, they can go back I think they revise, they have revised their position already mm. that uh, issue of the coalition of the wearing I think uh, it was maybe exaggerated in the media I think I think we also need to add uh, mm. the the uh, agreements EPA, what do you call them economic partnership agreements yes. mm. I think Tanzania was told point blank, you discuss your EPA within the East African community. So right. they also don't have a choice because uh, when you look at the, the economic economics of this region, yeah. Tanzania falls more in East African community than in SADC. Yes. SADC, I think, was for political reasons, historical reasons, the liberation struggle and so forth. Yeah. Uh, so they are still nostalgically attached to it. So but I don't think, I don't think... Uh, yeah, I mean, the ambivalence of Tanzania, <laughs> and then you look at the seat of the East African community being in, the, in Tanzania, <laughs> Russia, mm -hmm. you'd expect that Tanzania would be more energized in driving this agenda. Actually, it has helped a lot. Mm. We, I think we have participated in the negotiations in Arusha over the years. Yes. And uh, you find that uh, the are is not very comfortable with the many issues and they have been a source of a bit of yeah. slow conclusion of, of some issues. Mm. And I think that's why some of the countries were saying those who are ready to move on yeah. with some aspects, yeah. they move on. When we discuss all these things, nobody is mentioning Burundi. Where, where, where are they? Burundi is also there. It's, um, it's not very vocal, on some, but it was together with the Tanzania, they, they were not so um, eager to join these uh, three other countries. Broody is also emerging from a, a war economy over some time, I, and I think they have their own problems. They have, uh, the language issue is an issue there in, uh, in Burundi, because many of them uh, still speak uh, in French. French, French yeah. So I think they are also not very comfortable with a very speedy kind of integration. Right. But I think they, they, they have not been very much against the, the community. Also, bear in mind, Burundi is a very, very small economy. Mm -hmm. So it, it would be difficult for them to have a, a noisy uh, participation in all these matters. But I think they'll not be left behind in terms of benefits mm -hmm. of the infrastructure that... Uh, Lapset, well, the, the, the development of the port of Lamu. Yeah and the infrastructure coming through. Yeah. There are some people who think that uh, where you are constructing that up area, mm -hmm. that there could be a serious security problem if you build roads and uh, whatever. Uh, that is it feasible? You, you know, <laughs> there are some things uh, I think we are exaggerating and overplaying on the negative aspects yeah. in, in Kenya because any state, when it comes uh, really to the final push, they will take measures to enforce security. And the, 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 that the, the Ram Corridor, mm -hmm. it will be a game changer for the world of Kenya because oh it yes. will be almost be creating another second economy, a very huge economy yeah. in that area which has been really uh, left behind uh, a lot. Yeah. So 
we should not, you know, if we, <laughs> we should not be pessimistic, the, the, yeah, <laughs> pessimistic yeah, yeah. about uh, security, yeah, yeah, yeah. corruption. But, 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 and but, uh, but, but, Professor, we must also be pragmatic. <laughs> there are challenges which will exist. I mean, because the areas which we have built roads in this country, yeah, but they are bandit prone, so we, they don't get used, and uh, we don't want to spend all that money and then eventually we realize we didn't take care of the security concerns but it's a like threats. a chicken and egg kind yes. of an issue and yes. debate we have to open up the press <laughs> never <laughs> <think>. <laughs> so I, I think uh, the first thing is that we cannot say that yeah. because of we are feeling insecurity yeah. let's fold our hands and uh, we don't do nothing, yeah. and do nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. i think we do it and take action yeah and yeah. Uh, we should not we i think uh, the country has been caught up in uh, exaggerated and uh, negativism yeah and uh, pessimist pessimism uh, imagine the problem of mm. creating two economies in Kenya. Yeah, One which is dynamic mm. uh, towards the south or central. Mm. Yeah. And you know, marginalize the north. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I, I think we'll be creating more problems. True. I mean, obviously, there is need to do that. But yeah. somebody also says, while you do the new thing, you must also keep the old one going. And the problem is, for example, there is an argument that what has happened to the old railway? I mean, this weekend I took, uh, you know, driving some of those places, the whole railway line to Mount Kenya, for example, it's is totally disutilized. Mm. So why are we creating new railway lines, yet the old ones are in ruins? They are not opening up the areas that they were intended. Isn't that a problem? I, with I that think part uh, of it is the, um, the, the Mount Kenya, the, the Nakuru, the Nanyuke uh, route. Yes. yes. I was even involved in you know, when we were uh, rehabilitating it with the uh, uh, owner of Michuki. Yes. But the economy of that area has not really, uh, uh, has not been a very intense user of the, of railway, of the line. railway line. And possibly now as you create a uh, zero resort city mm -hmm. and that kind of corridor, then it's going to be a, a, a different thing. And it was because also of, of inefficiency yes. and the slowness of the, of the line. Mm -hmm. Right. It was only busy up to Deca. Yes. But now I think with the growing, uh, I mean, this, this devolution, it's creating other regional centers. Right. And and they are, they I think we got keen. into a problem also. Mm -hmm. yes. There were interests mm -hmm. to buy trailers yeah. to export and mm -hmm. import mm -hmm. things. Move the road transport. And, and, yeah. and therefore, that killed the railway line. Not just the Nanyuki one, even the mm -hmm. Malaba. The Everywhere. Malaba. I mean, even industrial area. Yeah. The railway lines laid down, yeah. uh, they are never used anymore. And, and and our uh, industrial area collapsed. It's still working. <laughs> How come the rail line, <laughs> <laughs> which crisscross the place, are not being Yeah, used? but you realize the trailers are causing us more havoc because the, the, the destruction of roads is so yeah, high. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and I hope the, the standard gauge lines, Lama one and this uh, Mombasa, Malaba, Kampala one, yeah. will help address that issue. Yeah. Yes. Back to the political question about us embracing mm. China. Isn't there much to be lost with our so to speak, shunning the West. Uh, really? Is it all happy? People will not believe you that there's nothing we're losing by closing the door to the West, literally. I think the mistake, <laughs> we'll make, the mistake we'll make is if we abandon the West. We should not abandon the West. Mm -hmm. The West is as important as China is in our economic development. One, if you look at uh, United States, UK, I think Germany and Japan, they have weighted voting in World Bank and IMF uh, mm -hmm. institutions. So you can't really ignore them because you still need the World Bank, you still need the IMF. Uh, but what I think is happening is that we want to dash to 2030 20, vision. And 2030 vision cannot be achieved if you're going to have feasibility studies for 10 years to construct a road. Right. Yes. And uh, there's no intention mm -hmm. at all of the government uh, moving away from the West. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it it remains our biggest market yeah. for flowers, for tourism. In fact, that is the whole everything. point. Yeah. So our well, exports are only two percent to China. <laughs> so all our exports. Yeah. The so rest is going the to I, I would say again, it possibly the issue of uh, moving east uh, and abandoning west is media, possibly uh, perception. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the government can never. Be is it is it media is it, it is media me perception or is it, it is in it practical is terms that we are getting more now uh, partnership and funding from the east? And uh, the West has declined, factually. No, still we are getting quite a lot from the West. Much more from the West than the East? No, well, no. They, they, they actually, you know, for a long time, even Jap there was a time Japan was a leading uh, source of foreign exchange. Yes. In uh, the 90s and the uh, late 80s. Mm. So it's not, this is not the first time we are going East. Japan has been our main uh, trading partner, yeah. source of uh, 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 direct foreign exchange. 
they have uh, built a lot of projects in, like in Yarim Bridge and what have you in Mombasa. Yes. So this is why I'm saying it's a creation of uh, whatever that there's nothing that can move east. We are diversifying our relations. But the truth is, there are never questions about partnership with Japan, for example. The quality of their work, the technology is never in doubt, as opposed to the questions that arise out of uh, China. Uh, I think also the, the, the quality, the yeah. quality, I think, as I said, you need to look at it objectively. Right. If you can get engineers to evaluate the credentials the which no have uh, come through here, yeah. Yeah. and they can road, or northern uh, bypass and the eastern bypass, yeah. they can tell us whether there is any major uh, a, a, a difference, difference. Yeah. In, because I think uh, it's sometimes we we take in a very it's perception. Yeah, mm. the, the, it's, uh, the issue of quality, as I told you, yeah. our engineers from Ministry of Transport, yes. two and many countries, and they found that uh, actually, oh, in many cases, Chinese quality was much much higher and at a lower lower price. Right. You, you, yeah. you so when Angel <laughs> talked about uh, something which I find interesting, yes, and he said he has talked to a number of ambassadors particularly named German ambassador. Mm. German ambassador is West. part of that West you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Who is complaining? It is the West that is complaining. Yeah. And the West has uh, a monopoly of dissemination of information, news. Uh, even our own papers, I'm, I'm sorry to say so, yeah. uh, we take quite a bit from what the Western uh, uh, world uh, disperses. So news. there is that bias and there is that fear that they are losing out to China. Now, what I think they should be doing is to try and increase their participation so that Kenya can then benefit. That, that's what I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you whether you can foresee mm. in the near future any Western major of infrastructure development in this region from the West. Because the competition is uh, very stiff. Do you think Western countries or contractors? They can win contracts here. Yeah. Anymore. Anymore. <laughs> I, I think the, the World Bank projects are, are subject to international tendering. Yes. Right. Chinese companies stand as well. And Chinese companies win. So yep. uh, who are you going to blame? It is, it is the, 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 the international economic situation. No, but uh, actually even, uh, you know, some of the Jap Japanese, uh, sorry, Chinese companies, mm -hmm. they are basically contractors. They're financing from elsewhere. Yeah. You know, like... Um, the Jomo Kenyatta Airport, first phase, the World Bank uh, funding was about 10%. Mm. Mm. The rest of it, 90%, was from internally generated resources right. from Kenya Airport Authority. Right. And uh, after the tendering, that time I was the PS there, Chinese company was the cheapest. The next one was 1 billion shillings higher. Higher. Okay. higher. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's therefore, it is purely, simply the issue of the competitiveness. Yeah. Is it competitiveness or Preference. corruption? It's no corruption. I mean, I mean, there, are, there could be some corruption, <laughs> just like in, uh, in some <laughs> of the projects. Yes. But yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. in the quotations, what yeah. comes to the table? What yeah. comes to the table? They, they can't be challenged. Mm. You see, what comes to the table is that these days the variation of contracts. Yes. It's not allowed at, uh, at all right. to be able to vary contracts, right. yes. which was a, a, a venue for corruption uh, in the 80s. Yes. So if the Chinese company quotes uh, a, a certain figure, yes. it must accomplish the project on that, on that within that, that quotation. Within yeah. that quotation. So the, we should actually be asking why are the Chinese much more competitive? Yeah. What model do they use? And uh, some of it, you know, like uh, they are building a um, university tower in, uh, at the University of Nairobi. Yes. They have created a village there where they all stay, they live there and yes. everything. They don't move. And you work know. is done speedily. <laughs> <laughs> work is done day and night. Day and night. <laughs> 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 and, <night. laughs> <laughs> and they are within a village which is, uh, they, they are reducing costs. Yeah. Some people even say they use uh, prison labor and what have you. They yeah, they they all yes. kinds of things. Mm. Some of these are terribly exaggerated. Yeah. And I think there is need for objective analysis right about the efficiency i guess my uh, <laughs> question uh, is that there, why i say there's something to be lost by mm. abandoning the west mm. is that the west of course for all its conditions uh, and political questions that they raised they helped to sort out some of the african political problems uh, which have to do with bad governance you know corruption and so forth which clearly uh, as museveni said yesterday <laughs> the Chinese are not asking, among other questions. <laughs> <laughs> the West, once we remove the West, are we 
have we sailed to the yeah. shore as African governments to be say to say we can do our own stuff? But uh, look at, for example, just to find, finish that, mm. uh, the problem in South Sudan has persisted. The voice of China, which is a major investor there, mining the oil, is invisible. Zero. Zero. Look it's, at China, it's, it's you know, Nigeria zero. where the girls were abducted. China is on the continent, but it's forced. It takes Americans to come on and say, look, Kir and Machar meet for things to happen. I think they have a different way of doing things. They, have, they are actually very active in uh, southern Sudan because they, they have actually quite a lot of investments. And the part, you can see part of the, condition, conditionality, the conditions they were, I mean, what they were asking the five ends of states yesterday what to do actually with the security in the southern Sudan and what they are putting their own part but in a very different way mm. so and I, I think as I said before the issue of ab abandoning the West does not arise mm. at all I think because only uh, yes. a crazy person would you think of that? Well, I no, think well, history, 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 history is not history convinced. Is better but <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, this started with your time in government, with the Kibaki's government. Yeah. Yeah. Now we've completely drifted and going and going, gone, gone. So let's see uh, where they, we stop. Yes, uh, but you, still, you have a taro company, for, which is a UK company, yes, yes. now very much in the book. I wanted to say this. I wanted to say this. The world fundamentally changed in 1991, uh, I think, the collapse of the Soviet Union. 89. 89. 89. 89. The world fundamentally changed. The West had the best opportunity ever to positively influence events in the world. But I think to a certain extent, uh, they, they lost the script to a point where they have become uh, sort of, if you don't follow away, you get out of the way. And, and that is now moving countries away from what was traditionally their, their comfortable home. Right. Uh, and I, I don't think the West should be complaining. I mean, they should be trying to, f to find out why is it that our boys and girls are leaving us the home without paying dowries, that kind of thing. <laughs> so it is, it, is, it, is not, it is not us. Yeah. Now, I don't think Kenya is in a position to abandon the West. We are not in a position to abandon the West. Right. But we need to make use of the West as well as make use of China to develop. To China is ab uh, applying what you call soft power economic uh, development issues and so forth. They are not confrontational in terms of, you must do this before we give you that. Right. And uh, I'm sure even at a personal level, if somebody gave you conditions that are more acceptable to you, you'll go to that person. So. There are other emerging economies in the world, like Brazil, mm. uh, Asian Tigers, India. Yeah. What role do you see them playing in this region? I think it is a, it's a, a wonderful development. They are called BRICS. Yes. Brazil, uh, Russia, India, mm. China and now South Africa. Mm -hmm. There is an, a, fourth, a third group called MINT. Mm -hmm. uh, MINT means Mexico, Indonesia, Nigeria, and Turkey. Mm -hmm. So I think we are now trying to diverse, di diversify our economic centers in the world. It has all been about the West, about the West. Whether you go in the inter United Nations system, World Bank, IMF, it is just the West uh, determining what should happen. I think these are now going to challenge the West. And perhaps it is better for, for the world to have uh, power distributed yes, uh, across the yeah, board. More power and diffused yeah. uh, environments. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You are putting a <laughs> word, uh, Dr. Kiara, because you have to assure uh, Kenyans from where you sit that uh, we are safe and okay. Yeah, I money. think we are safe. <laughs> uh, I think uh, the borrowing that we are doing uh, is we are quite safe. Kenya is a fairly strong economy, very dynamic. And uh, as I said, like, like the, our concern about inflation rate recently, it's been managed quite well. And now the parliament has an oversight. So, and really we should give support the government to go with some, because some of them are going to be game changer in many, many ways. The sudden again, the upset, and quite a number of things that the, the power connection uh, generation that is now coming. These are major changes. And I think the, the most we can do is put our political differences a bit and the ideological differences apart. Now that you mentioned power, to, now to that you mentioned power, yeah. there is a co um, concern that we are going to develop too much power that we don't need. And somebody will have to pay for it. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> we, we, we are, you know, actually in the coming few years, right, like that's the standard again, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. amount of power it will use itself is a lot. So we should not be worried about excess. In any case, if we have excess, we can sell it to, Expected, we have contract yeah. with Uganda and other countries, we can sell it very, very easily. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
uh, people are very concerned about our pockets. Yes. You know, for instance, when the uh, government introduced uh, this levy for funding the uh, railway development, which is a very, very important innovation for Kenyans to be able to participate. They, there is a, a levy or import duty levy or whatever. Mm -hmm. Some people have already, uh, again, uh, maybe exaggerated it. It's a small thing, but it raises uh, very crucial resources that will go very far in financing the railway line and also even developing the, the Nairobi railway network. Okay. Yeah, ma the mass uh, railway transport. Well, uh, we've come to the, our time is up, but uh, definitely there's more to discuss about this subject. I want to thank you, Ambassador Boas uh, Mbaya um, and uh, Professor Ikiara, former permanent secretary for sharing uh, your time here with us this morning. Uh, we're, sharing, uh, we're discussing the China-Kenya and China-Africa relations and the new bilateral agreement signed over the weekend and the implications they have for the country. And uh, from our discussion, uh, all is safe. Let's be happy. Keep watching Power Breakfast.